Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to everyone here at Case Western Reserve University in uh, beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. It's nice and sunny and warm here. <laughs> Hopefully that's the only incorrect atmospheric uh, thing that's said this meeting. <laughs> but we, we strive, we're striving to get things correct. But no, it's, it's actually quite cold. Um, and ha people on Zoom, I see we have about 40 people on Zoom. Uh, can you say good morning or uh, something like that? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to everyone in the group. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, everybody. So yeah, so uh, this is a hybrid meeting. So we have a, a meeting owl up here. So uh, the people on Zoom, uh, they can actually say and interact, uh, say things and interact with us. And hopefully you in the audience uh, will also be able to be heard on Zoom. And we have this kind of funky 360 degree uh, view going out as well. Uh, I do ask if you are on Zoom, when you're not talking, uh, please uh, mute yourself or and mute and uh, turn off your video. That will help save bandwidth and avoid distractions. Um, if you do end up speaking, we have a Zoom moderator up here who will try to uh, mute you uh, during the meeting. It is nothing on, <laughs> it is nothing personal. <laughs> it's just we need to keep things going there. All right. So. Welcome to the Hamside Workshop 2024. My name is uh, Nathaniel Frizzell, Dr. Nathaniel Frizzell. My call sign is Whiskey2, November Alpha Foxtrot, W2NAF, and I am the leader of Hamside, the Ham Radio Science Citizen Investigation. I'm an associate professor of physics and engineering from the University of Scranton in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and I'm very fortunate to be here at Case Western Reserve University with uh, my good friends and collaborators uh, who have worked so hard to put this workshop together. So this year's workshop is, the theme is alignments, alignments between the sun, moon, and the earth, between collegiate amateur radio recreation and the STEM curriculum, between data collection and analysis, between professional and citizen science. And as everyone here knows, we are preparing diligently for the solar eclipse of April 8th, 2024, which Cleveland will be in totality just in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I'd really like to thank our hosts here, uh, Case Western Reserve University, which they have the Case Amateur Radio Club, WAEDU, the Case School of Engineering, and the Case Western uh, Reserve University. And so I'd like to start by welcoming some of, asking a few of the people from our hosts uh, to come up and uh, greet us. So I'd like to start with Dr. Christian Zorman. Uh, he is the Associate Dean of Research is, did I get that correct? For the Case School of Engineering. Thank, and he's also the co-investigator, a co-investigator on the Personal Space Weather Station grant. So thank you, Dr. Zorman. Sure. Thank you. So as Nathaniel said, I'm a dean. We're not allowed to get out in public unless we have a prepared statement. So that's what I'm going to do now. So bear with me as I read this. Actually, it was David's doing. So. So, Ham, Ham Psy community and to all of its friends, welcome to Cleveland, Ohio, to the campus of Case Western Reserve University, to Eldred Theater, to the Case School of Engineering. Over the next two days, we gather to discuss topics related to the use of amateur radio techniques for the scientific study of ionospheric phenomenon, the 24, 2024 total solar eclipse, other space weather events, and things related to the scientific use of ham radio. If anyone were to question the importance of such endeavors, we only need to reflect on two significant space weather events that occurred during the modern era. 35 years ago, at the peak of solar cycle 22, a powerful coronal mass ejection hit our planet. It happened on March 13, 1989, and within 90 seconds, the entire Hydro-Quebec power grid was knocked out. The outage lasts nine hours, millions of Canadians were without light and heat, and nine months later, the affected area experienced significant increase in birth rates. <laughs> the treachery consists in inducing direct currents into the lines into which power transformers and alternating current grid were of little resistance. That 1989 storm was only the only one of significance during the space age so far. But even a bigger event was the Carrington event of September 1859 
It produced a storm twice as powerful as the one mentioned in March 1989. It later turned out that the cause was not one, but two CMEs, and came from the X 4.5 eruptions of March 10 and the M 7.3 of March 12. Some might argue that the next big event is just around the corner. At Case Western Reserve University, we boast an internet download speed of up to 800 megabits per second on wireless networks. This speed is fast enough to download the Barbie movie at high definition in 2.85 seconds. <laughs> However, in a world of increased hacking, GPS spoofing, and extreme weather events, the 21st century innovations that we've come to rely on are under threat. It is the self-assumed responsibility of amateur radio operators to ensure that resilient and high-quality communications are maintained at all times, even if all infrastructure fails. And it is this responsibility of HAMSI to promote and improve amateur radio communications technology. The HAMSI community studies these events and their effects using amateur radio, shortwave listening, and the organization of a worldwide community of citizen scientists. This is truly remarkable. The issues addressed by the HAMSI community are critically important. I've personally been involved with the Case Amateur Radio Club as a faculty advisor for seven, several years. It was not, I was not aware of the richness of amateur radio and its community, but I am now. The Case School of Engineering and the Department of Electrical Computer and Systems Engineering are proud to host WAEDU and its student-centric research programs. Undoubtedly, the methods, instruments, and observations discussed in this workshop will provide new science and new technologies, and most importantly, will inspire a new generation of amateur radio enthusiasts to use their knowledge, talent, and equipment in scientific pursuits. Now, some of you may have noticed in the workshop agenda that I don't have a call sign. This is true, and some of you might be asking yourself, have the good people of WAEDU dropped the ball? <laughs> yeah. Nothing could be farther from the truth. David, the ham radio evangelist, Kasdan, and his, and his many WAEDU disciples have approached me countless times to get a license. <laughs> they have even given me the good book. <laughs> and I have read it and I see the light. <laughs> and I am here to say before this congregation that before the end of the year, and most certainly before Hamside 2025, I will have a call sign. <laughs> On a serious note, please enjoy the sessions ham shack tours, posters, dinners, social events, and camaraderie. Enjoy CWRU in Cleveland. For now, 73, and back to net. David. Thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate it. We really look forward to uh, finding out what your call sign is. So once you get it, we'll, we'll email the whole ham side listserv so they'll know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Thank you. That was really wonderful. Uh, I would like all of the members of the Case Western Reserve community to please stand up and be recognized. Let's give them all a hand. Yeah. All right, I have a radiogram from WPJE. There is reverb on the Zoom. We will do the best we can there. <laughs> You fixed it great, thank you. Uh, from uh, Case, I'd also like to uh, invite their Amateur Radio Club advisor, the inimitable Dr. David Kasdan, AD8Y. Thank Thanks. Thanks, everyone. This one's brief. Welcome, everyone, to Case. Welcome to my hometown. I can't tell you what a deep pleasure it is to be here, be part of this, to see all of the, especially Case Amateur Radio Club members, officers, alumni. Supporters, thanks, Laura. We appreciate all your help. Yeah, um, I am the somewhat self-appointed chief medical officer of Hamsai. Uh, so I, I want to point out a group this size for this long. It's possible there will be a medical emergency of some stripe. University Hospitals of Cleveland is right across the street. 
you can walk to the emergency room even if you are you know unconscious so it's very good it's, it's okay uh, for those whose insurance only will pay for Cleveland Clinic it's only a tick down the street so the ham size stretcher bearers will will get you there that was funny okay um, and Matt has asked me to point out that for those of you who get bored with the conference and want to operate the special event station that we're running ask anyone from the club Today we will get you to the Glenn and Ham station and get you on the air. Everyone, welcome to Hamsai. Thank you very much, David. So being from the University of Scranton, I would also be remiss if I did not recognize the University of Scranton. Um, and we also have a wonderful amateur radio club, W3USR, and um, we are working, doing our best to continue uh, leading the HamSci effort. So to all the members of the University of Scranton, please stand up. <laughs> Now the the QS thank you everyone. So the QSL card you see on the screen before you is a picture of our school mascot Iggy, and the student playing Iggy actually has a call sign uh, KC3WUD. Um, <laughs> this. A uh, beautiful new station was installed last November, and that was through a generous grant from the Amateur Radio Digital Communications Foundation, ARDC. So thank you, ARDC. And students, do we like our new station? Let's hear it. Do we like our new station? Yeah. <laughs> and ARDC has been incredibly, they've really been a game changer for amateur radio and enabling, you know, back in the 60s, I heard stories of uh, people at universities putting up antennas with $3,000 of SGA money and then the students would use gin poles to put up a 40 foot tower on top of their building. That doesn't happen anymore. It now takes a tremendous amount of money, and uh, ARDC has funded not only us, but they're also funding the replacement of the W8 EDU towers, which is coming up, and they are also providing a tremendous amount of support for this conference. Uh, so they'll be, they have a breakout session tomorrow. Uh, John or Rebecca, do you want to say any quick words of welcome? John K7VE is from ARDC. Morning, everybody. Um... We're really grateful for HamSci. Uh, my role at ARDC is finding worthy causes for us to provide funding. And one of the earliest projects I got involved with was uh, University of Scranton's program with Nathaniel. And we're grateful to see what they've been able to accomplish there. You're gonna have an official dedication next fall, is that correct, Nathaniel? We've been invited and we plan to come out and uh, we're here today um, to enjoy the uh, seminars and symposia that are happening. Uh, we have some materials that we'll be putting on a table if you want to pick up some uh, swag and, and, and so on. Uh, and we're here to talk to you. If you have a project that's worthwhile that uh, you'd like to talk to us, catch me. Uh, or Rebecca, who's back in the corner there, uh, and I guess Phil could help out as well. He'll be presenting tomorrow, and uh, uh, let us know. And I, my job is to help guide you as you put in your request. Um, so um, be sure to corner me, and uh, you know, ask your questions while we're here. The other thing that we're promoting this year that may be helpful in some of your research is we have this large block of internet addresses that are fully routable and static and we're creating a um, large free VPN for amateur radio and you will be able to I put it in my suitcase but we're showing these little routers which I'll, I'll bring tomorrow um, you can take your static IP address with you into the field or wherever you want to go and so if you've got something in the field, you need to bring data back, but also want to reach out to that field location, you can do that over the internet. So uh, catch me and I'll show that to you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. We really appreciate our partnership with the Hamside community.
Thank you so much, John. Thank you, ARDC. And thank you for your support of this conference. They, they, along with the National Science Foundation, provided a tremendous amount of financial support. We have over, uh, I think, almost $90,000 in uh, support from NSF, ARDC, and Case Western. And that has allowed many of our really good speakers to come here and be funded, as well as our students. So thank you. OK, next, I would like to. Um, uh, we, we need to get the program started, so I'd like to uh, welcome Gary AFAA.